Welcome. Uh, all right. Hey, well, uh, thank you for coming to my talk. And uh, if there's anyone that wants that the demo gods are listening, uh, let's hope that they are watching over us today for this talk. If you uh, hear us up there. Yep, we're just hoping that this all goes well. So uh, got it. OK, uh, let me tell you a little about myself and we'll jump into the demo here. Uh, and show you what we're doing with Kubernetes and how it can hopefully solve all your problems as well. My name is Doug and I am an engineer at a big company. You've probably heard of us. <laughs> well, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, show you a little bit about what we're going to talk about and get into the demo so you can hear what's going on. Here's a brief introduction about the talk, and we're really going to show you how Kubernetes can be used at production scale on Raspberry Pis with bare metal, Istio, and all the observability that you can shake a stick at. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, show off some of the hardware that we have. And here's our Raspberry Pis. Uh, they're great to get started because they're only 35 bucks or if you actually want to use them with memory, they're like 70 and here's the other $1,500 worth of equipment you need to make them, you know, mostly usable with racks and storage and power and networking and all that other stuff that kind of just goes along with it. We're currently using this setup for our dev clusters and all of developers deploy here. And so that's where that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry what? We're using this for our testing clusters. And so as developers are pushing, excuse me, what? We're using this for our production clusters. Uh, so let's look at the control plane real fast. Uh, here's a look at our control plane. We have a uh, control techniques for controlling devices, control dialogue and control meta language. And so that really comes into our infrastructure as code and really controlling all the things with control loops. And we think that that's important because if we don't have control, what do we really have? So that's kind of uh, the theory behind it. And if you know Kubernetes, you understand the importance of control loops. Of course, we're using infrastructure as code. Uh, the YAML is our preferred language of choice. And so here's a CRD for our Helm chart operator, which deploys our applications using uh, GitOps version seven. And we're able to take this standard CRD and build all of our applications and Kubernetes clusters with declarative languages. So let's start here and I'll show you a simple deployment on top of our infrastructure. This pod uh, or, or this deployment creates a replica set, as you can see uh, down below. And uh, but before we actually get to the, the replica set, our, our deployment actually gets a sidecar. And so with the sidecar, we have, you know, our Istio and service mesh and observability. Uh, so all that kind of sits here in this sidecar pod. And, and the replica set makes another pod down here. Uh, which is important because that's the part that actually scales up and down and this pod uh, creates a service so once we have the pod we use labels and we match it and then we have a service uh, that people can actually access it and that's how we expose uh, the pod via this service over here so if you know kubernetes fundamentals that all works together oh and also i should point out that our sidecar has an init container so the sidecar init container emits the pod for the observability stack for the istio so all all important parts of our deployment and it's really simple uh, here's the map of our service mesh and so you can see how the services talk to each other with east west north south ingress traffic and really just the interaction between each one and how much traffic is flowing between them so we get a really good observability stack here and as you can see our p99s are pretty low uh, right up to this point when we're going to start adding our sidecars and then the uh, cat videos we serve are a little bit delayed, but our users don't really notice, so we're okay. At this point, I'd like to call in Mike, my coworker, to help explain how we were able to break up the monolith into eBPF microservices so that we could take advantage of the artisanal syscalls that we were able to develop into the kernel. Hey, Mike, I think you're on mute if you want to... Mike, Mike, you're mute. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, 
Yeah, here's the here's the mesh right here. Here's how service one talks to service two, and where we actually get uh, overlay network with our CNI, where it's actually using jumbo frames to make everything work really smoothly and not complex at all because it's just networking. So it's kind of easy to understand once you you know understand fundamental TCP packet structure and how a sidecar works with CNI. So uh, that's kind of the basics of the Istio side of it. Uh, I will talk about our runtime security here. And this looks at the syscalls of the application developer's stack. So if we're using Node.js to run asynchronous JavaScript, then this syscall here actually says it's trying to open a file. And if you understand the Hebrew and the Greek, uh, then you just read it. And it's actually really cool to get observability here. Oh, look, and then it corn dies. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted to trigger here to be able to see how we can detect these crash loopbacks and understand what's going on in the system. So that is all great. Just, oh, and there it reboots. And now we get a new pod. So it's making those calls again. And then it crashed again. That's probably my bad code. But the most important thing you need to know is to never type the command cube. Oh boy. Um, it looks like we lost Mike, but that concludes our demo. And thank you for coming. By the way, we're hiring if you'd like to work with us on some cutting edge technology in an exciting environment. Thank you.